About 13 days ago, the first 400 units of the Mega 65 were sold. The Mega 65 is a modern FPGA based that is using field programmable grid arrays, something I don't think I'm qualified to explain, realization and interpretation of what was going to be the C65. Mega 65 is an 8 bit computer, highly compatible with the C64, but featuring some niceties like a mechanical keyboard, HD AV output, supporting memory extensions, Ethernet, and SD cards for storage while still conforming to what an 8 bit computer should feel like. All implemented under the GNU Lesser Public License, or LGPL, which makes it an open source project, which is great. I just have one question. What is a C65 exactly? Well, uh, researching this, I answered that for me. And for anyone else who may not know, I'll answer it in this video. The C65, as you might have guessed, is the Commodore 65, also known as the C64DX. It's not a product that was ever commercially released, rather it was a prototype built by CBM, Commodore Business Machines, around 1990, sporting a Commodore Semiconductor Group, which was the name for MOS technology at that point in time's CSG 4510 R3 CPU running at a blazing fast 3.54 MHz, compared to the C64's um, one. And it featured 128K memory, double that of the C64, and supporting all the way up to 1 meg. Whoa! And it was running Commodore Basic 10. If you're totally unfamiliar with the history of Commodore at the time, you might be like, huh, okay then. But if you're a bit more familiar, you might be saying, wait, what? Indeed, the C64 already had a successor, and it was called the Commodore 128, or Commodore or C128, which was introduced in 1985 and discontinued only four years later in 1989. So C65 is a confusing name to give to a machine that comes after the C128, however it was only a prototype and if it ever sold commercially, might have been called something else and I'd bet it would have. Besides, the C65 wasn't so much a successor to the C64 like the C128, but we'll get into that later. First, some background. Commodore was not in the greatest position at the time, and C64 was still its best seller, so trying another successor after the somewhat disappointing performance of the C128 is understandable from a business perspective. Don't get me wrong, the C128 still sold well, it was a great hobbyist machine for the time, and its compatibility with the C64 made it a great machine for hobbyists and professionals to move on to from the C64. But it simply did not have the sheer market power of the C64, it was frankly uncompetitive with the new blazing fast 16-bit and 32-bit systems on the market at the time already, such as the other successor to the C64's flagship product status, the Commodore Amiga 500. It's like if Sony released a PlayStation 3 with more RAM alongside the PlayStation 4, it just don't work like that. Not to mention the C128D, the model of the C128 that resembled the Amiga 1000, which was a higher end Amiga compared to the Amiga 500, which were both out at the same time, and the cost reduced version of the C128D, the C128DCR, CR standing for cost reduced, cost as much to make as the Amiga 500, while at the same time the new model of the Commodore 64, the C64C, which looked like a C128 but was not one, actually made more profit per sale due to the fact that this new model sold at a higher price than the original breadbin C64. And of course, the Amiga 500 was also a big hit at the time, dropping on the world like a bombshell of great design that was really underappreciated at the time, time being 1987. A true next-gen system way ahead of its time in a lot of ways, but it had nothing to do with the C64 at all, except being a great game system that gets perpetually more expensive on the used market. Market, that is. My point is, if all this sounds like a bit of a mess, well, it is. 
It honestly feels like one of those episodes of Kitchen Nightmares with Gordon Ramsay where he walks into an establishment and it's like three restaurants in one building with a hundred items on the menu each. It's a bit of a mess. A mess of great computers, mind you. It's in this mess that the C65 finds itself, with the Amiga 500 being somewhat of a success, incoming competition from IBM compatibles with the C128 being bit of a disappointment, and the C64 definitely at the tail end of its life as a commercial product, it lives in our hearts forever though, the C65 was yet another C64 successor. See, the Amiga was weirdly marketed back in its day, a lot of people just didn't really get it, you know? Um, was it a Commodore 64 successor? Was it a whole new thing that had nothing else to do with other Commodore computers? Was it, if so, was it like more of a game system or more of an IBM PC type deal? It was both and everything, but one thing it was not was Commodore 64 compatible. And people loved the C64, hence the C65. A backwards compatible machine with advanced features of Amiga, it had an embedded floppy drive while still supporting the old Commodore floppy drives like the 1541 with only the dataset port missing, and general design similar to the Amiga 500. VIC-3 video chip capable of more than the C64 but backwards compatible with its graphics, and a stereo SID setup one could control both SIDs independently in contrast to the C64's one SID. A more modern keyboard layout, additional expansion ports, including an expandable RAM slot. In addition, it featured uh, two controller ports, a 50-pin expansion port, a CBM-488 bus using a 6-pin DIN for the floppy drives, a user port, parallel, 24-pin, a stereo, two RCA connectors for left and right channels, yeah, separately, RGBA video uh, via DE9F, RF video, composite video via 8-pin DIN, and external fast floppy drive port using a mini DIN 8 connector. A bottom flap contained the aforementioned RAM expansion port. So yeah, it's quite crazy to think of a Commodore 64 type machine with expandable RAM. I mean, you could definitely get a RAM card for your C64, but it's not something that was built into it. It's an interesting clash of, you know, the 90s and what the Amiga was with more upgradability and, modif you know, user modification ability and the more of an 80s thing where, you know, computers were generally one device that you would have and you would not necessarily modify it in the same way like you would modify a modern PC with, you know, a expansion built into the computer itself. A weird mix of features, to say the least. Apparently, according to Compute's Gazette, a Commodore-centric computer magazine, citing rumors that Commodore will use a similar strategy to the Apple IIgs extend the lifespan of the computer with an upgrade due to declining sales, while maintaining compatibility. Quote, the latest rumor says, yes, we've heard reports from several sources of a new machine from Commodore, a 64GS, if you will. This machine is reportedly driven by a GE802, a version of the 65816 microprocessor, which is a 16-bit version of the 6502 chip, and runs at 4 MHz. By comparison, the C64 runs at 1, the Amiga at slightly over 7. It comes with 128K RAM and expandable to 1 MB. Fully expanded, it supports up to 256 colors. Maximum resolution is a stunning 640 by 400 pixels. We've also heard it has a 64 mode so that 64 owners can purchase a much more powerful machine and still use their old software library. The C64GS reportedly comes with a built-in 3.5 inch disk drive and will support the 1581 floppy drive, but our sources say it does not support the 1541 or the 1571, which was incorrect. All we've heard about 
sound in the new machine is that it's enhanced and features stereo output. The final tidbit is that the C64GS will retail in the $300 to $350 range when it debuts in November. Which it never debuted, so I guess that's also somewhat incorrect. According to them, there was also infighting at Commodore as to whether the machine should be released at all. And we all know how that went. At the end of the day, it never saw the light of day, but was actually created. Some prototypes have surfaced over the years, sold off initially from when Commodore International was liquidated in 1994, later appearing on sites like eBay. In 2009, one sold for 6k euro. In 2011, one with missing parts sold for about 20,000. In April 2013, one sold for close to 18,000 euro. In 2015, another for 20,000, and then another for 15,000, and so on, with the highest ever, a C65 prototype with the RAM expansion board that went for, and this is real, 81,450 euros in November of 2017 on eBay. Sheesh. That brings us to now. The Commodore 65 lives on as the Mega 65. Mega, by the way, is Museum of Electronic Games and Art. Uh, you thought it was just a name. In 2015, they announced a recreation of the C65 computer using FPGA. Originally planned for release in 2016, but due to some delays, only recently it has actually come out. Not hitting the store shelves, but available to buy. Well, that's a very brief telling of the story. Don't you think it's quite interesting? It's hard to make it a concrete narrative with some sort of moral or message. Rather, it's just something that happened. And it's kind of neat. So I hope I told the story well, uh, it's a very brief story, and if you like computer and video gaming things that are neat, why not subscribe to the channel and leave a like and comment below with suggestions. Maybe I could go through more of the specs of the C65, maybe I could more do a deeper dive into what the Mega 65 project is and what it's like. Uh, what do you think? You know, leave suggestions, corrections, and thoughts down below. Um, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in another video. Stay tuned. Bye.